So we are starting the session. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Vishnu Dutt, and in this session, we are going to cover data transmission, connection termination, and flow control. So if you remember last time, what we did, right? Last time in our last session, what we did is that there, there are two characters. One is Anjali, and the other character name was Rahul, right? So we were successfully able to make a connection between them and i explained you the importance of transport layer protocol right so you now understand uh, what could be the disastrous disaster if we do not have transmission control protocol right so anjali was sending some information to rahul and then rahul uh, got some wrong information right so in the last session if i remind you briefly uh, what we had is that uh, on a on a pretty higher level we were able to successfully connect anjali and rahul over a virtual connection which we call a three way handshake in which anjali is saying that hey rahul are you there right and if you are there i want to send i want to send some messages to you and i am going to send that message starting from number 1 right then rahul say yes i am here uh, and uh, even I want to uh, send some messages to you and I can start my message from number one or maybe any arbitrary number, right? Anjali say, okay. And these three communication uh, messages which uh, happened between Anjali and Rahul, we knew them with the name of uh, uh, TCP three-way handshake. You all understood that, right? Now, once this connection is established now we want to send some traffic over it right and then we want to see how the sequence number and acknowledgement behaves so it is going to be very very interesting session then we will see how connection termination uh, happen but for example you are successfully able to communicate to uh, uh, to rahul then you are send, uh, you are saying that now i want to terminate this connection and the most important thing is the flow control okay so let's discuss the agenda uh, on a detailed level right what actually we are going to cover uh, in inside those things so we are introducing the concept of buffering in this session right what exactly this uh, buffers are right and then we are going to discuss we understand a buffering now where exactly these buffers are required right so i if you are not aware of what buffering or buffers are, do not worry. These are very, very simple concepts, and we are going to explain this, right? Then we are going to talk about, uh, because buffering is required before data transfer. That is why we are going to explain you uh, buffering first. And then data transfer over the connection which you created in the last session, right? Then connection termination, as I, uh, as I discussed. Right, then we are going to talk about the problem of slow receiver. So we are heading towards the concept of flow control. And to understand that, we need to understand the problem of slow receiver. What is the meaning of slow receiver? Uh, the meaning is basically it is not able to process the information, whatever you are sending, right? That is, it is slow. And if it is slow, then what mechanism you are going to do, okay? then basically the most important thing and which is the pain point of almost everybody and this is the main thing which is asked in many interviews uh, basically when you're troubleshooting tcp if you are not aware of the concept of window it is going to create some problem in troubleshooting those tcp scenarios right so we are going to understand concept of window how windows uh, how window expand to its right hand side uh, why it expands and what actually the window is, right? So uh, it is a part of flow control mechanism uh, and it is very, very easy. So do not worry about it. And we are going to learn it from scratch, right? Uh, I'll tell you that why behind uh, a window, then you can understand, okay, it is necessary. And that is why it is there in TCP. So if you understand why behind anything, you can understand, uh, uh, that concept well and that is why the company name my company name is bridge wire because we are bridging the wire okay then uh, we are talking we are going to talk about actual flow control actual send and receive window okay and at last 
as usual whatever we have learned till connection termination because uh, till connection termination that what happens what happens to the sequence number and those uh, acknowledgement numbers what what are the flag set right whenever this communication happens what exactly happens there right so we are going to see everything on wireshark the session is going to be very interesting because if these things are new to you right we are absolutely learning them from scratch so be with me and let's try to discuss first thing first which is concept of saving packets in memory or we are discussing here the concept of buffering right so if you if i give you an example if i start with an example right so uh, actually my wife is helping a lot nowadays uh, uh, in 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 uh, basically creating these presentations and everything right so and believe me she doesn't have any visibility into the networking domain but uh, and now it is she is understanding this tcp because she is creating a lot of things so yesterday i was uh, i was asking her and first of all whenever i ask something she 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 asked me that whether it is related to tcp and <laughs> this is pretty interesting thing so uh, yesterday i was discussing some problem uh, in the same topic so i was asking her that suppose uh, you uh need to explain something to uh, another guy suppose this one is a this one is u and then basically you need to explain something to uh, a person right and now you are getting information whatever you need to explain to this person you are getting uh, that information from a person c right this is a this is b so you are explaining few things to him but to explain those things you are getting the information from this guy from c right the problem is this guy b is pretty slow right and this guy c is pretty fast he is bombarding lot of information on you which you need to pass to this guy then how are you manage this information uh, then she said that i have basically two options one is whatever this guy is asking i can write that information on the piece of paper so that i can remember that right or the second thing is whatever if he this guy is too fast i can just ask him uh, guy uh, dude please slow down right because i am not able to process this information so this this is what happen in actual uh, life scenario and that is exactly what happens when we talk over tcp you never know the 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 receiver side how much fast it is right and you never know the application which is sending you the data to the transport layer how fast it is so if i give you a brief that uh, see uh, these are our character anjali and this is rahul so anjali is sending uh, anjali is creating the data from the application maybe it is any application like whatsapp and all so from that application layer the data is going to be towards transport layer and believe me that data is going to be in the form of continuous stream right you are sitting here suppose you are a transport layer you are getting a lot of data from the application right but it might be the case that this transport layer is not ready to send the data maybe of any reason there are n number of reasons because of which this transport layer cannot send the data right so if it cannot send the data it means that it has two options only one is it can inform the application that mr application i am not able to process your data i am not able to send your data can you slow down or can you just stop right the second thing is it can say whatever the application is sending right to its memory right these are the only two options so what different things this transport layer is going to do in terms of the application so transport layer is just taking the information from application layer application layer is sending the data if it is not ready to send the data to the receiver it can say mr application please stop i am not ready or it can send the data into its memory right and suppose its memory is also full then it can immediately say mr application please stop okay only two possibilities are there just like just like uh, 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 my wife whatever he has explained here right 
So exactly same concept, whatever we do things in real life, actually those are implemented in the same way. If you try to understand the problem, you get to know what we are doing, right? Just try to go why behind the things. The why is actually application is sending the lot of data to transport layer. Now transport layer has some options, right? One, it can save the data into its memory. If that memory is even full, it can say, Mr. Application, please slow down or do not send me the data. That is it, right? So the second thing is, as this data is actually the continuous stream, right? So uh, you will see this uh, this alphabet, I, D, O, N, T, I don't love you. It is the continuous stream, right? So there is one more responsibility of transport layer to segment this data. If I say the word segment, right? The meaning is, the meaning is whatever the data you are receiving from the top, you are creating chunks out of it, right? And there are some rules to create those segments and we will be discussing them, but those rules are when we are going to implement everything, right? So do not worry about it. Just try to understand. We are getting the continuous stream of data and then you are just dividing those streams into multiple chunks and that chunks we know that uh, we know as segment so suppose in first segment you put this value i second segment you put this value don't then love and then you it is the responsibility of transport layer so whatever it is gearing from the application layer it is just making segments out of it right and if these segments are uh, more than it needs some space to store them or it can directly say say that mr. Application do not send me right so basically uh, From this board you should be able to understand that there is a requirement of uh, 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 Memory where you are going to store some data from the application right and then whatever the segment you have created you create the tcp connection and believe me you know what the tcp connection is if i say tcp connection it is this yellow arrow means the tcp three-way handshake is done if tcp three-way handshake is done now what you are doing is you are sending these segments which you are created which you have created if i say you it means that transport layer your transport layer whatever the transport layer uh, 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 is implemented on your device on that device that device is able to segment the continuous stream of data and now after creating the tcp connection between uh, sender and receiver you are sending these segments out of these uh, uh, the, this uh, this connection right and we are going to actually see today basically how this data uh, data transfer happens in terms of sequence number in terms of acknowledgement and we are going to see that on wireshark so i think you understand from this board that there is a need of to store uh, some information from the application and that memory space where you are storing that the, the information is known as buffer right so now the question arises: how many buffers you are going to have, right? You can simply say that I am receiving data from the application, then it is going to be only one buffer. But I can prove you that there is more than one buffer is required, right? One at the sender side and one at the receiver side also. And that is true if I'm talking about only one way communication, right? But this communication is going to be two ways, so more buffers are required. But believe me, those are pretty logical. Right now, let's try to understand where exactly this buffering is required, right? So buffering is required whenever somebody is sending you the data which you are not able to process. It means that you need to save that data into the memory, and that is why the buffer is required. Right? So we will try to investigate at sender, at receiver, what are the different points where this problem can happen, where you need memory to save the data. Right?